Welcome to jobskillshare.org. We are starting our part five. If you are new to this video, make sure to go to youtube.com, type jobskillshare, and in playlist, then you can click on this IT lab talk. Make sure you watch the first video to understand what we are covering in these labs. So to get started again, we are in CompTIA 902. And now if I come down, we actually finished our um, identifying security threats and uh, vulnerabilities. And configuring Windows Firewall, we are going to start with this one today. Now, in a real-world environment, you probably will not be working on firewalls a lot unless this company has something specific going on and then they have come up with some kind of solution inside the Windows itself. Most of the time, it will be taken care of by the group policy, but sometimes maybe you need to get into your firewall and do something because of this unique issue that you're having or unique uh, you know, solution that you have found in your company or they have found it. But most of the time when we get computers, we image them, at firewalls, we leave it as is. And, you know, if there has to be something that, you know, very specific, then of course, it depends on your title, like maybe you are a system admin at that time, and you may be working on these things a little bit more extensive. But, you know, we don't touch with firewalls too much and they, these are the things that that's, that have been taken care of by the network firewalls or something that you know is controlled by the network because you really can't go to each and every computer to change the firewall settings and this is why i said that we don't work on a windows firewall a lot but it's good to understand because there could be something that you may come across and you need to fix it then you need to understand how do you actually go into these firewalls so this is a good lab you should really go into it and just uh, don't waste too much time on it but try to understand it a little bit more than just you know knowing that there is a firewall deploying anti-malware programs um, as you can see here they are basically making you test something you know um, like you know activating a trojan and then testing network services with netcat um, and deploying malware protection so in in this like you know you will deploy something to kind of know that you you have uh, you know successfully um, um, activated a trojan and you found out by deploying this malware protection and this gives you a skill and not Remember, when I say that, you know, you can deploy this software or that software, try to understand the whole idea behind it because these are not the only software or not the only, you know, solution that is going to be out there. This is where you are an IT pro. This is where you become an IT pro because you understand that this is not the only one thing I can do. I can really go outside and try to find more, uh, you know, solutions based on what you have learned in these labs. The next one is performing system maintenance and, and uh, you know these two were not that important to me in the because I know yeah you will be working on deployments and stuff like that but what what is most important is performing system maintenance now this is something that you may come across restoring a windows computer using system image and backup now you know what this is probably like the the most important thing that will you will do in your help us in IT uh, entry-level job if you have to deal with many many desktops you will have to deal with some type of imaging system either it could be a single imaging meaning like you just put the usb in a computer you take a backup of it you got the new computer you put the usb and restore the backup from that backup or you will have to deal with some type of you know uh, imaging software like a server based software where you have a server you put the image on it and then you get the new computers and you restart the machine from that server and deploy the images to it now i know this is a little bit more advanced and i have covered this in jobskillshare.org there's a full section on imaging uh, you know uh, how to do imaging it's a free course help this ticketing uh, help this entry level to specialist course there's a section called imaging I have actually showed many different imaging systems in there and this is one of the top questions in interviews also now because if someone have to hire you and they know that you're going to be dealing with 200 to 300 to 1000 machines they really want to know if you know about imaging or some type of copying you know because this is this makes your job easy. This makes someone else's job easy. And this is why you're basically hired because if someone tell you, we got 60 computers and you need to deploy them in certain amount of time, maybe they'll give you a month or something like that. That's where they they will not want to teach you all these things because if they, they know if they hire you without 
you have knowledge of these uh, softwares or imaging tools, then they know the only way is to do it manually and manual will take forever. So yes, you need to know about this one. You know, mark, uh, mark this one with you in the notes and uh, try to do this lab um, as much as you can and then go to jobsclisher.org and do that lab also. Uh, sorry, take the sections of imaging also. Using Windows Disk Maintenance Tools, configuring and run Windows updates. Again, you know, this one will be also important while you can use it with like other tools like CC Cleaner and other things that I've showed in my course that where you can download external tools and you know do a cleanup and I have more videos on YouTube too where you can just get the whole laptop uh, you know brand fresh fresh laptop and how do you do the full from scratch to do the updates and I'll share that link and updates again if you are in go if you are going to be in a company you're getting all these new machines and sometimes uh, you know uh, you need to update them and most of the time you need to update them and then take an image but sometimes maybe people will call you from the office and they hey you know my computer is really running slow and things like that and a lot of time you know it's the updates that are pending or maybe something is really old and needs to be updated so sometimes when you update it then it, it even fixes the issue I had a very weird issue with dotnet and you know I didn't know that dotnet had a new uh, feature out and that kind of uh, when I did the update that fixed it I mean before that I tried every single thing the machine was like that and I kind of gave up on it but when I did that luckily I found out that oh you know because I actually updated the .NET and that fixed the issues so yeah you're gonna come across uh, these type of issues in your IT life and and I think these are the things that that to keep in mind that there are ways to fix it like you know running updates and using other tools now, a lot of people will come to you, you know, that, hey, you know, do you know anything about troubleshooting? In troubleshooting, I have actually showed many other um, uh, examples from different labs because someone really asked me, can I have like a full troubleshooting, uh, you know, recommendation from these labs? And this is so cool because you can jump in from CompTIA. If you have premium, ac uh, premium access, you, can, you don't have to be in CompTIA just to know only three things. I know there are more than this. So there are so many other labs and so many, uh, you know, different uh, troubleshooting sections that have different, different things for troubleshooting. And I have shared that in my YouTube videos. So if you go to the troubleshooting section here, it says introduction. You need to know about some of the introduction. It resolve common network access issue. Now, this is, this is kind of, you know, normal in our environment. A lot of people will call you about my website is not coming up, but then somebody else's website is coming up. Then you know that is this a network issue or all, or is this just specifically to that machine or is that port or something is going on? Or maybe everybody will call you that the site is down. Then you know that that is not your issue, but it's, at least you know it now. So you should really quickly, uh, uh, sorry, assign that call. Like a, this would be like a critical call to your system administrator or network engineer or managers that the whole site is down. This means that this is out of your control but you know try to understand common networking access issues so at least you can then you don't have to call your system admin when one person uh, desktop is not working and everybody else is working of course you cannot just call your system admin that you know oh you know this website is not coming up for this specific person without you doing any troubleshooting of course you will do it and you find out that maybe there's a port issue maybe there's something a little bit more than your skills then you will assign that to your system admin uh, troubleshooting network connectivity issues as you can see these are the one that I have explained before too that how important for you uh, to know these commands like IP config tracer NS lookup uh, ping ping like ping and IP config is something that I don't know if you don't know this and I, I have I would have a hard time uh, you know, understanding to someone, someone that will hire you because IP config and ping is so basic and so important for you to know as an IT person that it doesn't matter. I mean, you have to really use this om almost um, every probably second or third day. You're going to come across something that you have to deal with IP config or ping because you're either putting a new machine and you need to test it with our network systems, with your other network system by doing IP config, finding out the right IP address. Is it pinging the other server? Is it pinging the domain control? Things like that, you know, it depends on your work, but you will come across this a lot of times. So I really recommend you do this and this will be probably uh, in your in your interview too. Do you know any, anything about NS lookup? Can you give me an example? Can Do you know anything about ping? Can you give me an example? Well, how would you use ping? I showed my example my, in my last lab that how you can 
ping it and it, uh, you know ip config and then it will give you a ipv4 6 ipv6 and then how can you find the ipv4 by just using like one or two things so yes do this because this will come really really handy not in not in just in your interview but in your normal it uh, daily life windows uh troubleshooting windows operating systems error now again this is so you know your job is to deal with windows right operating systems most of most of the time if you are hired it's going to be either windows 7 or windows 10 now and what are you going to be working on you're going to be working on mainly on that system so a systems administrator works on a server operating system like server 2012 2008 2016 or linux servers things like that but you as a help desk, you mostly work on operating systems. So what would be the best way to kind of like if somebody, if somebody is going to ask you questions related to your skills, they are going to be asking things like, do you know anything about registry? Have you done anything with registry? Have you managed registries? Um, you know, do you know anything about imaging system? As you can see, even in this, they have an imaging uh, section in here. Again, maybe they're different. Understand kernel errors. Now, you know, too much advanced i would say kernel errors and things like that yes you may you may not work on these type of things most of the time when when there's an issue and you know that things are really bad the the, the idea is is that you don't want to spend you know six hours on something that you know you have an image or you have a backup all you have to do is to copy the data for the user like their documents images uh anything that is important in that, in that desktop and you copy that and then you give them the fresh image and then everything is back on but sometimes you don't have a choice you know sometimes just people are like you know at a different level where you're really they have so much advanced things going on in their machines that you really cannot do uh, the image kind of thing you know that's kind of like the best thing but sometimes you do have to solve the issue and that would come to like you know rolling back of the registries or things like that or messing around with registries making sure you take a full backup of it before you do anything uh, that you're going to learn in this uh, uh, section so for this uh, you can uh, you can see that why it is important that you know i i kind of skip over these these first two right here but then i focus on these three right here performing system maintenance troubleshooting common systems problems com uh, troubleshooting uh, network connectivity issue and troubleshoot windows operating system errors because this is kind of like your main job um, of course, after ticketing system, customer service, and things like that, uh, in a technical side, this this is what you do. Like this is why you are in IT. This is why you are in the help desk because you can do these things and other people can't. So I would recommend you to actually go over this lab, and I will see you in part six.